get started. Uh, hope your week is going well so far. Today's Training Tuesday. We do have some new uh, information for you. Uh, we're going to talk about a new custom column field that was added at the PO. Now, we talked last week about taking it was this exact custom column field. We took it away from the bid. Are you utilizing a small business question? Uh, because at the bid, of course, when, is when you're soliciting vendors and you wouldn't know at that time uh, whether you were utilizing a small business. However, at the PO, you would know. So we're going to unpack that, and it's going to make small business reporting uh, more accurate and a lot easier for the agencies to run reports uh, throughout the year as you are uh, reaching your, your small business goals. Um, another cool feature in BidBuy for a BidBuy activity this week is search file. And what that's do is rather than always having to attach documents that you have on your desktop, you can attach documents that have previously been attached using uh, bid by. So uh, I, I see this being utilized for certainly for the notice of electronic submissions only document, uh, maybe the blank forms A, blank forms B. So you don't even have to leave the system in order to attach a document. So it's a pretty cool feature there. Um, a reminder that the bid by monthly training will be the second Wednesday of each month. I'll just probably leave that on here as a slide over the next couple of weeks. So if you weren't here last week um, or you're not here next week, et cetera, you're going to be able to still uh, be aware of our bid by monthly trainings. And then our fun fact of the day. OK, so the new required field is going to be at the PO. So this is really kind of an extension of what we talked about last week. And it is this question, are you utilizing a small business? So uh, the screenshot here is, is what this is going to do is going to make small business reporting more accurate and a little easier to do. And so that's 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 a win win for everyone because uh, that we're statutorily mandated to do the small business reporting every year. Uh, this is actually pretty timely because many of you were completing that form uh, just last week. So here's a screenshot of just the uh, I pulled it directly from that small business contracting. Uh, annual report form. So you have your total agency awards, you have your agency awards with small business pursued as a uh, set aside, and you have the agency awards with small businesses not pursued as a set aside. So they are delineated because if you go in and have that, the first field is this set aside for small businesses. Yes, that any awards um, extending from that will go in this first column. Or this first field. However, if it's not set aside, maybe it's just an IFB that does not have one of the uh, small business set aside codes um, or a small purchase that is not set aside now because you got a waiver, for instance. Um, but a small business ends up for whatever reason winning that time. They still count as you know towards your small business goals for that 10% each year. It's just that it wasn't specifically set aside for small businesses. So we do have that delineation, but we still want your agency to be able to count those dollars. So that goes into agency awards with small business not pursued as a set aside. And so by having this extra field at the PO, it's going to allow us to capture all of that information. And it's going to make it a lot easier at the at the end of the year. Or if your agency would like to, you know, run a report quarterly or monthly, however your agency would like to do it, to see where you're at as you are striving to get to that 10 percent, this is going to be an easy way to do it. So this field is only going to be at the PO now. Uh, like we just talked about, per previous communication, this field was removed from the bid because, um, of course. When you're soliciting vendors, you don't know if you're actually going to be utilizing a small business. So we just we pulled that down as an option because it would be if in the past, if you selected yes to um, is this a small business set aside, you immediately would get this drop down and the drop down was required. And so you had an option to select yes, no or N.A. And so we were selecting not applicable because, of course, we didn't know if we were utilizing a small business yet. So we pulled that away. So. We were trying to get to the same information where we have here, where we have the, the small businesses that are pursued as a set aside versus, well, it wasn't pursued as a set aside, but it still ended up going to a small business. And so the, a, a much cleaner way now is to simply just put that field at the PO and it will default to no. Uh, but should be changed to yes if using a small business set aside vendor. So it will be a required field. Um, and 
but it's going to define so in, anything any procurement that is your standard IFB uh, that does not end up going to a small business, you're not going to have to change anything. It's just it defaults to no, but at the same time, we want to be able to capture it if you are using a small business. Okay. Uh, a couple other notes about this. So I think this would be a good time just to um, to recap what, what is to be put in there. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't say check your job aid because that's always really what you know what we're leaning on those job aids because we we lay those out for you and of course i'll be updating uh job aids today uh to reflect what we're talking about right now as well but just to recap because there was some confusion in the past on what to select for that is this a small business set aside procurement and uh not to confuse everybody but i do want to be on the on the same Page with everybody. This question used to say, and I think we've talked about this a couple of times, but it's it's good to go over it again. It used to say, "Is this subject to small business set aside program?" And um, it, that could be interpreted in two different ways. One interpretation is, "Well, no." Um, so let's say we go out to small businesses and uh, we get a, we don't receive any responses. We then get a small business set aside waiver. Okay. Now, someone could look at this and go, well, it's still subject to the small business set aside program, um, but we have a waiver. And then another person could look at it and say, hey, you know what? It's not subject to because we got a small business set aside waiver. So um, several months ago, gosh, maybe six months ago now, time's getting away from me. Uh, we, we changed that language to be very clear that is this a small business set aside procurement? So. If it's set aside for small businesses, that it's only going out to those small businesses. It once you get a waiver, so yes, should be selected when soliciting small business set aside program vendors. However, change to no once you clone it, and if you if you get a small business set aside waiver is approved, then that answer is no. However, like we just talked about, if it was no, but then you end up going to a small business set aside vendor, you still want to be able to get credit for for having those dollars go to a small business. And we're going to talk about how you can um, easily see if, if you're going to a small business or not. Two clicks in bid buy, you're going to be able to see if, if your vendor is a small business set aside vendor. So it's a little bit different than in the past where you had to, you know, maybe go out to the Illinois Procurement Gateway and check. And have it's just a whole different. It's so much easier, and I'm going to show that to you as a part of our example today. Um, but for an example here, um, if no is selected at the bid, you know this is just a you know, RFP, IFB, or a small purchase. Once you've received a waiver, and that that no is selected at the bid and not awarded to a small business set aside vendor, no information is needed. Um, because it's going to default to no at the PO, so it will be a required field. Um, but we'll have that chance to select, yes, it is awarded to a small business vendor if you're um, utilizing an active registered small business set aside vendor. So at the bottom here, this is what it looks like. Uh, I just pulled this directly from a, a PO this morning. You, you can see how, you know, is this a small business set aside procurement? In this example, it's no, um, but we still have that option here. Are you utilizing an active registered small business set aside vendor? Now you can see right now it doesn't have an asterisk next to it because it's not required. However, um, because we wanted to be able to train on it and, and let everybody know that that was a field, it is active at this time. So if you were processing a PO last week, uh, you might've seen that there, it's not required. So if you didn't have anything there, it wouldn't, um, you know, it wasn't gonna give you a, an error message or anything like that. But um, as of close of business tomorrow, so that way we have a clean date um, as of October 1st, so when you when you come in on Thursday morning, um, you will see that it is required from now on. So that way we have a, a specific date. Um, it's you know the the next quarter, everything, so we know exactly when when that became a required field. Okay, um, let me see. I missed a question here. Oh, okay. Um, yes, that goes along with what I was just saying. So I, I'm sorry I missed that question a couple of minutes ago. The agency may be unaware that the company we are awarding to is a small business set aside when we do not pursue it as a set aside. Do we need to check each vendor in order to determine the correct figure for agency awards with small businesses not pursued as a set aside? Okay, so that goes directly into to what I'm going to talk about next. So 
That's almost like a perfect setup. Thank you very much for that. Um, and it's very easy to check to see. Um, so how do I know if I'm awarding a small business set aside vendor? So the previous process was to check IPG in order to gather that information. You can still do that. I mean, that doesn't, nothing has changed with that, but literally two clicks, I can see if I'm using a small business vendor. So uh, you just select the vendor ID link in the vendor tab and then select terms and categories. So right now, actually, why don't I do that right now? I'm gonna go out to bid buy and I'm, I just do a, a PO and I go to vendor. So you have to, you're, you're processing the vendor, you're processing this PO. Uh, this vendor or this PO happens to just be in sent status, but it, if, it, if it's in, in progress status, right, this is where you'd be doing it. So you'd be completing, you know, you in the general tab, you know, you'd be working in your attachments, all those sorts of things to process your PO. The vendor ID, which is this link here, you just click on that, that's one click, and then you go to terms and categories terms and categories of that vendor, and then you scroll down to the bottom and see small business set aside, yes or no. So two clicks, I have that information. I know whether we're going with a small business or not. And that way, you know that your, your um, small business set aside and small business reporting annually is gonna be accurate every year. So super easy. And then at that point, it, it, it defaults to no, right? So in this case, you're just checking to go, yeah, make sure we didn't, you know, go with a small business. Not that's that we uh, were, we aren't going with a small business if it wasn't a set aside. Okay, so you can see that here's that, here's that field that is right here. Okay, so stuff. Um, now, if, if for instance, you, you know, let me, let me kind of go the opposite route. We go with a small business uh, that is set aside, that is set aside. So that answer was yes but it doesn't get checked, changed to yes at the PO, we're still capturing that information. So it's a, it's a little bit of a, of a fail safe there in order to make sure that we're capturing all that small business uh, dollars each year. So if, if, so it happens, so let's say, if this is yes, no, I guess we're looking at that in that instance, right? We've looked at no, no, we've looked at um, no, yes, now, if it was yes for the, is this a set aside, but no, we're not utilizing an active, we're, we're, we're still going to be able to look at that report and go, no, it was set aside because it was going to a small business. So it's an easy way to capture it. I mean, we still want you to put in the correct information at the PO, but um, by putting in this uh, field at the PO later, it's a bit of a, a like I said, it's, it's a bit of a fail safe to be able to capture those dollars. Okay. And I'll be happy to walk through that with anybody. Um, SEOs know that that's available as well. But once again, vendor, I click on the vendor ID, I hit terms and categories, and it's on that, that little pop-up. And because what happens is, for those of you that may or may not know, there, the IPG directly interfaces with BidBuy, so that's automatically updated. You know, a vendor can't come in and change that field. It, it, it's automatically happening from IPG. Okay, so pretty cool. So next year, I promise it'll be a lot easier. Well, not even next year. I mean, next month, when you wanna start running reports on your small business numbers, um, it'll be much easier and, and cleaner. And you know, at the end of the day, we just wanna get that accurate information so your agency can get the credit that you're actually contracting with small businesses. Okay, so our next slide, we'll talk about the uh, the search file rather than choose file. So when we're watching standard documents or blank forms, you do have this option here to use the search file uh, feature to load documents that have already been previously attached in BidBuy. And so we're gonna go out and, and show you how to do that. Just in your attachments, you're gonna select add file and then you hit search file, which is the button right below uh, choose file. And so, like I said, for these, for those documents that are, um, I think we're going to see this mostly for blank forms A, blank forms B, standard terms and conditions, right? Um, standard certifications for those um, small purchases that are less than 10, where you're going to need to specifically have the standard terms and conditions and certifications on there. You can have, um, 
you know, the electronic submission, notice of electronic submission only document. So how this works is I can go add file. See, normally we go file and we go out into our drive or go out into our computer. Instead, I'm gonna hit search file. And now it brings up parameters here. I can, you know, whether search by the name, I could put in, so for instance, in this case, I did form B, forms B. I search, you, I can see all the different instances where, um, you know, all these, you can see where I've <laughs> attached a bunch of these different forms B and trainings. So I can go and select forms B. And then save and exit. Now, uh, blank forms be there. You know, another instance would be, you know, blank forms A or standard terms and conditions. It's just, it's a really easier way because it's already kind of built into the system and you don't have to technically go out to anywhere that you have, um, you know, into your, into your computer to, to grab attachment. So it's a cool little feature. Um, I think it will be handy and uh, use it if you'd like. We have another question here. I've come across vendors on the term categories who state refuse to answer. Does this mean that they are not a small business vendor? Yes, correct. That would be that they are not a small business vendor. Because if, if they are a small business vendor, that means it, it's coming through the, uh, the interface from IPG and it will say yes. Okay, and just a reminder that our bid by training will be the second Monday of each, or second Wednesday, excuse me, of each month moving forward. In the past, we we'd, we hadn't scheduled them out that far in advance, um, just because we didn't know what our training schedule was going to be. But there was enough of feedback uh, from agencies that they would like to know further in advance. So we decided, you know what, we were we were really kind of doing the second or third Wednesday anyway of each month. So let's just lock that in. So the next trainings will be October 14th, uh, November 12th, because technically that will be a Thursday. Um, and the reason why is the second Wednesday in November is Veterans Day and December 16th. So now we know our next three moving into next year, though, it, it will stay with the second Wednesday of each month. Here's the information here. Um, and I'll just leave that as a slide for the next couple of weeks as well. Okay, so our national day. It is National Coffee Day for Fact of the Day, as well as National VFW Day. So um, go have a good coffee. And, you know, and better yet, a good way to celebrate kind of a two-for-one shot is uh, a veteran uh, a good cup of coffee. All right, a question. Will the terms and conditions tab get updated daily to reflect the current SBSP status? Will it change to no if they go from active to inactive? Yes, that's a great question. They, it will. Every every 20, 24 hours, that gets updated. So if, if they were a small business set aside under um, a month ago, um, but now they are not, that will be updated. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your week, and we'll talk to you soon. These will be posted and sent out uh, per usual. Talk to you later.